have used this in ML or in machine learning in operation or auto ML. Uh, so let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, mm, so today we will start thinking about systems. So in general, when we say system, system includes, we have a digestive system, we have certain systems, bank system, and overall system and its components. So <clears throat> in order to start thinking from the system perspective, when you say system thinking is a system thinking and holistic approach, that actually focus for the system as well as its constituent. And when we say how these systems are work, in order to say human digestive system, there are many systems out there which contribute to this digestive system, starting from uh, your hand, then your mouth, then, then so many systems out there. So how can they be integrated when it comes to in data science, both Uh, you can think of like building a management system. Uh,
sorry if you are for the can you see my screen? Oh, then uh, if I go up to the attraction, just to see how one email, if you have one email system, there is a pipeline, the email development, the email evaluation tracking is uh, things at one and they can be um, result to one system. What you you desire system the system to have one system. But now in the modern one we have multiple systems. We need to integrate them because the system can be the project uh, is one component, the backend is the other component and game development part the data pipeline is the other component. <coughs> so you have these three components as well then based on this then if you want to maintain or if you want to separate every functionalities from the system <clears throat> am i audible now okay uh, so system development by itself is you have different components so let's think of in that way in modern system development way then <clears throat> in that process so we have a process workflow and pipeline so in order to uh, design a structured approach you need to divide your uh, system into this uh, parts so there is task or a piece of work that you need to uh, do and it has its own outcome and its own time boundary for that then the process is there, a set of tasks, which is multiple tasks can be changed into one process. So this will introduce you a parallelism concept or parallel processing, because you will fetch data at the same time you will process data. Uh, you will train the model. So this is an iterative process. So you need to fetch, you need to train, you need to fetch, you need to train. So you will use that one as a parallel, uh, as a parallel task, or you can consider that one. Then the workflow is there. There is a relationship between each task or each process. So you need to parallelize them. That means it can be changed as a workflow. And the pipeline, which uh, is a set of your workflows, so that introduce another parallelism of the workflow as well. So multiple pipelines are there that are fetching pipeline data processing pipeline, email training pipeline, in the evaluation pipeline, multiple things are there. So when it comes into the pipeline state, it becomes a big uh, and it's a set of workflow. And your ML system should follow this kind of things. This will help you in order to divide your task into a number of divide your problem into a number of tasks and organize them in a way that can be structured in this approach. Then once you have this workflow or um, how you can break down them into a set of manageable categories because they are easy to automate, easy to manage. You are working, in, let's say you are working in a team so everybody has their own your contribution towards your data pipeline, towards your um, ML model development pipeline, towards your model evaluation. So in order to um, synchronize these all different contributions, you need to have a certain standard, a certain workflow. So we will use that workflow for us to make each things manageable and easy to access and in order to make them repeatable in all of course, different situations. So the situation that will happen, like if you have merging issue in the data pipeline team, that there can be also a merging problem with the main the machine learning development team or task related to that. So you need to fix if you have a proper workflow, or that will help you like do this do that the way we can use code like that, the standard code for all team <coughs> or the variable naming, maybe the function naming. You can 
say more on this one, but just using that can make it easy for you to manage your machine learning. Okay. So as you know, initially uh, the system development life cycle starts from the initial or the initial idea or the problem itself. Then uh, the company goes to the feasibility study. Then there will be uh, requirement gathering. Then system analysis, system specification, uh, system design. Then development, then testing, then implementation for maintenance. It's a circular process. And once you have completed, let's say, uh, let's think of the learning management. And once you completed the data, data extraction pipeline, it should have to follow this circular path. Then once the review is done, you can present it to coach. Then for the <clears throat> data processing part, the same. For machine learning development, the same circular thing. So you can do this parallelly. So data extraction team will extract data process to process and data and model development can be done parallelly between different teams and that will work allow you to have a parallel among tasks and your project will better. So this is the general system development and life cycle. Then <clears throat> When we come to the structure system development life cycle, just as earlier, you have to plan, you have to design, you have to implement, you have to test, you have to deploy, you have to have a plan for maintenance. This is a circular thing, but every development is focused. So these are the six main steps you will follow in both this training to develop any model related to uh, software or any software solutions. So once uh, the software development life cycle, let's think of uh, the management and the control. This development needs to have a control layer that will save the objective and the capacity and the monitoring the progress. So there is a use project manager, which needs to be um, uh, above you and who needs to be completed as a given the task, uh, the, the, the given timeline and the given quality so the quality control and the controlling objectives because uh, in project definition maybe you need to talk to the stakeholders and everyone in that what who are they responsible and based on that you need to find a certain thing about that specific solution so that will be examined as a set of paragraphs then you uh, management control will control it. Does this meet the deadline? And that you can think of it as a proposal phase. Then the system requirement, the system definition. And once you start implementing with the quality control objectives, can be basic quality controls, how you define your um, solution in terms of what the code quality, best practice, uh, thinking of the scalability, um, interoperability. You can have many, many control objectives here. Then you will go to the management control side. So the delivery and support, they will con they will start to control uh, what you have delivered and what they will start to develop the documentation for the end user. Then, uh, monitoring is the last one uh, from the management side. Uh, does the model give the intended results or it's deviating from that one? So they will check that as a last, uh, a last thing and they will plan for maintenance and update regular update. Then the structured operations or in terms of uh, infrastructure, there is also another infrastructure in the owners. Uh, when you in the software development, we, we call them as a DevOps, but uh, in MLOps, they, they are called in machine learning, they are called MLOps. So, enabling self service for team, standardized tooling, process, support the business, and bringing the extensible automation, which is the CI CD one. 
so everyone needs to work on the data branch like if we pick single scenario everyone needs to work on the data branch and once it's staged on the staging branch so you, you are able to work with the main branch or the production branch so in order to have these standards or industry standard technique you need to have uh, an email of so you need you need, you need to think of in terms of that because uh, development have many errors many things but once you you could have been tested in <laughs> tested in different dimension it should have to be staged and the port reviewers or anyone testing should test and this is the production ready product so let's move it to uh, the production one. That will be the final stage. Then after the production, you need to think of the maintenance. So just this is all about to give you a hint about how to think in terms of ML models. So the DevOps, um, they work in the development cycle because uh, you can push to the dev anytime and you can merge, you can with other things. So that will and decrease the complexity because you know you don't have to wait with someone else so that's why we use git uh, github project for that one if there is an issue you can fix it immediately you can push that one so once your code is tested it, it can be staged to the production one so that will support it. and independent production release uh, in using this docker or jenkins or puppet or to uh, simulate your work environment, uh, <coughs> your machine environment to the other one. That means when you use Docker, let's say Dockerizing means containerizing. So if it's containerized and all the things uh, that you have used in your project are there, so you can simply import that Docker and Using that Docker, you can run uh, the project in different machines, uh, whether it's in local machine on server. Uh, because many times we fail to do that, and uh, the, our development environment is the, the development environment. We know that we have multiple dependencies, but when to the production one, there may there might need some of the dependencies and some of the packets were up to date. Uh, some of the buckets are lagging behind, so they need, in order to avoid this kind of um, mismatch in the production environment, we need to do We need to containerize the code. Then, in order to achieve that one, you can use this continuous integration and delivery. That means continuously you can integrate to the dev branch, and continuously you can pass the necessary cases pass on the delivery one you can deploy that to me or to production so <coughs> when it comes to this ml systems we have the main components as well as the data engineering part the data part we need to create we need to produce the data we need to make the research the data then you need to develop the machine learning model, or you need to fine tune, you need to have parameters, tuning, any of the tasks which is related to machine learning model development, including the evaluation, model tracking. Then the last one is the application engineering, which means that how how your model can be deployed, uh, or how we can deploy that one. But do you want to use a mobile app? Do you want to use uh, a web app or what? which mechanism are you using? So deciding on the app engineering and also integrating that one with the ML model uh, API endpoints will be necessary. Then uh, MLOps have similar principle with the DevOps one. And that, mm, the different thing is here we have more components. That means the ML de development, uh, training and operationalization, continuous training, continuous development, um, model development, it there. Uh, 
prediction and serving is there and also continuous monitoring because your machine learning model when you continuously um, train the model it have more information it it will intend to give you the desired result sometimes it may not so you need to fix that one so this is the envelopes uh, system in the machine learning uh, system so the MLOps component is configuration. You need to think of the configuration. You need to think of the automation, uh, data collection, data pipeline creation, data verification, feature engineering have the same as a data engineering task. Then the ML modeling, the metadata management, the process management, and model analysis, testing and debugging becomes the machine learning component. Then serving infrastructure and monitoring will be the app development plus the monitoring stuff is on the model um, evaluation. So these are the main components for the ML model. Then the workflow can be in this way, but think of it, it doesn't mean this is the water flow, you, like you can and develop ML model, then operationalize, then continuous training, then model development, another prediction and serving. But they think of this is as an iterative process, you, but because you have you need to get back. When you train the model, you didn't get the desired results. So you need to go back to one step to your feature engineering step, or you need to go back to the data itself, you need to have additional data or need to be aggregated data again, or drive columns. Or there are so many things, or so many uncertainties, rather than the planned one. So we need to iterate on that one. Then the last thing is after the model deployment, you need to serve them. So you need to think of how you can integrate with the application, whether it's web app or mobile app or a desktop app, you need to have certain communication way. Uh, usually we are doing it through APIs. API can serve the data on the model prediction in the data. You will send a request from you, any of the apps. Then based on that, the backend and the front end can start talking. Then continuous monitoring because you need to look all the predictions, all the model training steps, all the parameters. Then you will see how it deviates from the expected outcome and how you can fix. So if it's needed for retraining, so you can go back to the training step. You can go back to the deployment. So basically, the machine what learning operations workflow looks like this. So you will follow this one as a guideline uh, while you are developing your machine learning models. Then MLOps capability. So in order, um, why we use this MLOps? Just to get this reliable, scalable, and secure infrastructure for our ML models. That means with, wherever you deploy your ML, um, models uh, application so it needs to be run there uh, it needs to be scalable uh, that means you can it, it needs to accommodate more and more when the request becomes bigger uh, it needs to be reliable every time it should have to be a valid result because if you think of chat gpt it, it have its own front end and there is a back end behind the gpt model and if that gpt model doesn't give us a reliable result, we couldn't use that one. And if that cannot be scalable, we couldn't use the chat GPT because you will find our alternative. <coughs> Scalability means there are so many requests, but still it's handling and it's giving reliable. Sometimes it hallucinates, sometimes it gets bad, <coughs> but still it gives us a reliable result. So that's why we are just taking with GPT or Gemini or any of these large language models you have in your machine or you are using while browsing. So here we have the MLOps structure. Uh, that means the experimentation phase, the data processing phase, the data training, development, then model serving part is there, then uh, 
online uh, experimentation, model monitoring, ML pipeline, ML model tracer. These are in ML model development stage. Then the above one have your data sets in the feature repository. Then once that, you will start experimenting, you start processing the data again, you will start training the model or evaluating it, serving it, all related to the ML models. And you have a metadata about your machine learning model. Uh, artifacts. Artifacts means their their laws, their how many um, parameters that you have using to train this ML model to evaluate how you are evaluating, then uh, how is the loss is going, what was the epoch, if you increase the number of epoch, if you decrease the number of epoch, what what this does does mean for you in terms of your prediction. So you will have that one as register. For this one, you can use ML flow, uh, 1DB. Uh, there are so many tracking, machine learning model tracking are there. You will save everything that you have while developing this uh, machine learning model. Then the source and the artifact repository and the CICD. This is the complete umbrella of the machine learning model code you have written and your people is there. your artifacts should be there your source code and the CICD how you are developing that means you are using there then staging then production then the last thing is <coughs> the security and the privacy issues so or how how are your model is secure or to access and how much secure how much that does give me privacy to use your system then infrastructure wise, you need to think of infrastructure wise. Uh, should I, deploy, I have to deploy in my local machine? Should I have to deploy in somewhere else in the cloud? Should I have to use the AWS one or GCP or any Azure, any of the cloud service providers? So that was the other uh, thinking which you can think. Then in ML development process, uh, there is a data engineering step, so the data set and the feature repository which you have stored, you can use this as a database or Excel or anything else, but you need to have this one as a storage uh, to store your data. Then that data will be shipped, shipped to the experimentation and prototyping phase, so you will start by injecting the data, you select the data, uh, define the problem, then inject your data, then select the data, the necessary data, then explore on it. Feature uh, engineering will be done on that specific data according to the problem. Then you will prototype the model, validate the model. Once it's ready, you will be passed to the version control and your code. <laughs> then it's, it's for the formalization, let's say, your you have set that this file in on your git so it should have to pass in order to be merged to the main so that will be the restriction or the formalization step then <clears throat> here in the bottom there is a model registry and, and model metadata and artifact so this is another registry which you can register your ml model ml model <clears throat> Uh, metadata that means in terms of metadata how this model is developed that how many push does it take does it need batch processing that needs uh, real life processing uh, what are the hyperparameters that have been used how many LSD, how many um, jar you you can think of many things uh, do you use random forest do you use a uh, um, xg boost do you use linear regression models so you will write and you will specify the parameters that you have used to get the best result. So this will be filed. Next time when you come back to improve this one, you will start from this. Because once your experiment all is registered, it's easy to restart the training and to get the result unless in, otherwise you need to start from the, the scratch. Uh, which is the problem defines uh, the problem definition becomes different. 
then training in operational uh, operations where you start your from your version control then training pipelines are there building integration testing continuous integration continuous delivery how you deploy how the deployment starts and uh, the ml pipeline engine where you store your machine learning model so on the deployment process you have the model registry you will build you will test you will deploy the production from the metadata you will uh, start to call that one for the online uh, experimentation then the production model is capable of answering your questions so that's it in the deployment process in monitoring you can set so many monitoring tools because you are saving your model artifacts then your uh, draft detection your content concept detection your continuous evaluation result will be uh, saved and once uh, the model is not giving the desired result you can set an alerting system you can integrate those systems with your slack with your email you will receive when the pipeline is baked or when something is wrong with your answer you will uh, set an alerting system for you to alert you uh, on slack or any of the tools which you are using in your company then there is also a, serv a serving log so you can review that one and alert uh, model result or any inconvenience throughout your system ml system so the in between the ml ops can be depicted in this picture so you can conclude it as this one the training and operationalization the continuous training model deployment predictive uh, prediction serving model monitoring and data management so start from your data then the model training model development then training and operationalization then serving then continuous monitoring this is how ML uh, in uh, ML of in between looks like. So these are some reference you can uh, read, you can dig down into it, and you will. Uh, this will guide you to start your ML logs of in, and auto ML while you're developing the machine learning models. If you have any question, you are welcome. Question anything that needs to be clarified. Uh, everything is clear, or do I need to explain more? Anyone has any idea so far what you have seen from the challenge? Do you have any idea how you can integrate this concept with your um, project, this week project? Anyone? So let me consider everything is clear. I will share the slide on the shared folder. Uh, that you can reach. So thank you everyone for joining. If you have any questions, reach out to me or any of the editors. You can have our immediate response.